Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Handtech Markets. Each week I take you through the key events that I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. And into this new trading week, investors are certainly a little bit cautious, and that's certainly not been helped by the fact that the US is on Labor Day market holiday, but also the fact that it's it's come to the point at which investors are struggling to really gauge exactly how the impact of these geopolitical tensions are going to have on the market. Certainly stock markets have uh, are possibly going to be coming under a bit of pressure in, in the next couple of days if tensions start to ramp up a little bit more. Certainly the EU summit at the weekend suggested that the politicians were looking to ramp up the pressure on Russia by improving uh, or expanding the sanctions that they are placing on Russia. But it's very difficult at this stage exactly how to gauge this. Gold price and certainly the safe havens are starting to look a little bit more positive. But it just seems as though in the last few weeks that this um, the safe haven trade that was continually being driven by the uh, geopolitical tensions in eastern Ukraine is just being dampened down a little bit. And certainly the gains that we've seen in gold have not necessarily been so sharp as they have been in recent months. Now, the key factor that we are looking out for this day, this week, throughout the week, is the fact that there's such a significant amount of economic data. You've got all the manufacturing PMIs, service sector PMIs, and we finish off the week with the key non-farm payrolls uh, data. But the key central banks of uh, the major economies are all pretty much announcing as well this week. You've got the Reserve Bank of Australia, you've got the Bank of China, uh, sorry, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, and also the ECB. Now that ECB, that final one, is the key factor that everyone's going to be looking out for because last week we had inflation data for the eurozone that came in slightly under. Um, last month's back down to 0.3%, but there were a few signs that perhaps there, that uh, a bit of stabilisation with certainly Spain and a couple of the regions in uh, in Germany performing okay in terms of inflation. So maybe the ECB will be able to just to wriggle through this one, this current meeting, and just get through another one where they haven't engaged the quantitative easing. Now the market itself continues to suggest that it's pricing in um, quantitative easing with bond yields around the eurozone continue to fall down and uh, just looks like they're, they're pricing in the uh, deflation and the necessary need for quantitative easing. The ECB seems likely though this month to uh, announce possible me measures towards um, the uh, purchase of uh, asset-backed securities uh, and that would be seen as a sort of like a private QE uh, ahead of what market would be uh, looking for, which would be the uh, the full blown um, big bazooka QE, which would be more uh, aligned towards purchasing um, sovereign debt uh, on a on a GDP weighted basis. But it certainly looks at the moment as though um, the ECB is not quite there yet, and uh, it could be a, a couple of months off before it happens. But certainly the market is pricing in some sort of QE action. Okay, so how does that leave all our forex trades? Well, in terms of euro dollar, it continues to fall lower, and certainly Friday it looked like it it formed another consolidation and then broken down yet again. It's that's been a feature of the trading over the past few weeks, really, on euro dollar bout of consolidation and then a downside break and it looks like now we're pushing ever closer towards that key September 2013 low around $1.31 and uh, it looks like that any sort of rallies are being sold into on this euro dollar so just keep that in mind when you see um, euro dollar up maybe 30 or 40 pips on the intraday basis. Cable is a different story though. Cable spent the last uh, seven or eight days batting against the resistance at uh, $1.66 but finally on Monday morning it broke out $1.66 above there and it now looks to be pushing out. There's an upside target of uh, $1.6675 initially but uh, certainly the initial breakout was slightly tempered by the uh, weak in, um, manufacturing PMI data for the UK but I think if it can start to form support above $1.66 then the, the sterling bulls will certainly look as though they've got a bit of a foothold finally in this market and they'll start to think about possibly pushing this higher in, in terms of a recovery. For dollar yen, again, we've found support nicely at 103.50 at the back end of last week on Thursday, and it's now started to push up, trying to hold above 104 big figure. And if it can now push above that 104.43 level, which was the reaction high from uh, a week or so ago, 
it can start to look towards those December, January highs that we saw around about 105 big figure. So the outlook for dollar yen is certainly improving. What about the uh, indices? Well, certainly the S&P and uh, Wall Street remains strong on these on these markets. Certainly compared to the European indices, anyway, which remain um, underperformance, uh, which continue to underperform and dragged back by this uh, the geopolitical events in Russia and eastern Ukraine. Okay, so for the S&P, it pushed above 2000 last week, that was the psychological barrier, and it's now so trying to form some support at that uh, 1990 level, and I think that is the key that you need to see um, if that remains intact. If you see a dip towards there, it could well be another buying opportunity for the next leg higher. For the DAX, it's been trading now between, uh, there's two key pivot levels on the DAX, 9,400 and 9,600. And it's sort of trading between those two levels. And that 9,600 was hit pretty much to the pip uh, last week, and it uh, remains the resistance. But if that 9,400 level can stay intact, then the bulls will start to form support and look to uh, push back up towards that 9,600 level again. Similar source of story for FTSE 100, really, with... Um, uh, support now forming around 6,780 and if that level can stay intact well um, it can start to build support and push on towards that 6,834 which was the the lower key reaction high uh, within the um, the last few months and if it can break above that 6,834 level then we can start to think about maybe pushing back towards the highs around the 6,895 again but uh, still some work to do on the upside for the uh, for the FTSE. Moving on to gold, again I said, as uh, earlier I said, that um, the geopolitical tensions remain a driver of the safe haven trades. Gold pushing higher today on this uh, increased um, news of tensions, but it's not really pushing on. And I still think that on, on a net basis over the last few months, there is a, a sequence of lower highs and lower lows on gold, which is dragging the price lower. And I think uh, I could be expecting um, a lower high, maybe in the region of £1,300 £1, to 1305 maybe. And I think around that sort of level, we can start to see gold pulling back lower again. Because I think the outlook for gold continues to suggest pressure down towards the uh, well, what is now the uh, the latest key reaction low at seven um, twelve seventy three. Okay, for the rest of the week, as I said earlier, huge amounts of data out this week. Um, we've we've got starting tomorrow the Reserve Bank of Australia, but then we go straight into the uh, ISM manufacturing data for the states. Again, a big number, and then we've got on on uh, on Wednesday we've got the service sector PMIs for China and the UK, and also the ADP employment report number, which, to be honest, in the last few months has been a pretty good indicator for non-farm payrolls on Friday, so keep that one in mind on Wednesday. And then on to Thursday, we've got all these central banks coming out. We've got the BOJ, we've got the Bank of England. Again, I haven't even been able to mention the Bank of England, which um, people are beginning to certainly think that the Hawks are gaining control and maybe looking out for some sort of lead um, in terms of when we're going to get some uh, tightening by the Bank of England. We're going to get a statement with the Bank of England um, monetary policy this week, so maybe a little bit more of a clue. And also on Thursday, that key ECB update as well, along with the press conference. And then on Friday, we finish off the week with the non-farm payrolls, which as ever is a huge number. We're looking at the participation rate, we're looking at the average hourly, um, average weekly earnings as well in the States, again for signs of where um, maybe inflation is beginning to little pick up a little in terms of the wages and uh, maybe that would give the, the hawks on the Fed even more of an excuse to uh, gain voice. So lots to go on this week, lots to drive the markets forward and uh, I wish you good luck in your trading and I'll speak to you next week. Thank you.